Adobe for Education is the creative resource for K-12 and higher education. When students have access to creative tools like Adobe Express, they can easily demonstrate learning and develop digital skills that go beyond the classroom, across the disciplines, and with all types of media, including posters, videos, web pages, presentations, drawings, and more. Find out more at adobeforeducation.com. You're listening to an EduTech Guys recording from ISTE 2024. Enjoy. Hey, welcome back to ISTE 2024 with the EduTech Guys. We have our next guest in the seat. We're going to let him tell us uh, who he is, what he does, and all that kind of good stuff. So here we go. Hey, thanks for having me. My name is Brian John Drude. I work at Adobe, and I lead our thought leadership and advocacy teams which means we do everything from really looking at the story of how do tools that enable creativity help teachers and students in the bigger picture, um, their schoolwork and careers and their personal lives. So a lot of research and advocacy around those big important topics. Well, you know, Adobe's been around for, for, for my lifetime, and I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I remember using Photoshop back in the 1990s. Anyway, so a long time ago. But you, what I love is the fact that you, that you guys have grown... Uh, exponentially in more than just the products that you provide Mm. and you know that's what we're talking about here you know you realize wait this is this goes way deeper than just you know Photoshop or Illustrator or you know the new AI stuff or any of that this goes deeper to you know the user and how this becomes a part of their lives and make their lives better yeah and so um, let's let's get into that let's talk about you know what you think and, and and especially when it comes to the user's feelings, you know, and how they're using this to make their lives better, make them emotionally better, mentally better. Because in this, especially this day and age, that's what we need as we're using a product, especially as our, our children are using this product. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, and at the one level, uh, Adobe really thinks about the creative economy or the creator economy. So if you want to be a creative, are there jobs out there? Is there stability? Is there a way that you can make money? But beyond that, is there also a way that you can find purpose? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can make money in lots of different jobs. What are kind of the the fringe benefits or kind of the the better well-being benefits of if you are creative and you get to do creative work? Mm -hmm. So one of the things we did last year is Adobe Foundation partnered with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Health, um, on on mental illness, um, to survey thousands of people to see what happens when you do creative work. How does it actually affect your mental well-being? So we surveyed uh, people 13 and older, and what we found out was 63% said creativity improves their sense of confidence and their abilities, which of course then sets you up to do more of those things and explore Mm -hmm. those options. But 61% also said that creativity can reduce feelings of stress or anxiety. And for us, that was really important because, you know, you want to do creative things, you want to find purpose in it, but is it also good for you? Is it healthy for you? Is it helping you do the kinds of things that you want to do? So on our team, the Adobe for Education team, we then did a follow-up study, um, focusing specifically on teachers and students. Because we're in this moment where we know teacher burnout is worse than ever before. Yes. Um, We know student mental health and well-being is kind of worse than ever before. So we have all those stats. We have all that information. But what we were lacking is, so what do we do about it? Right, exactly. What do teachers do about it? What do parents do about it? What does an administration do about it when they're faced with those sobering sobering statistics? Mm And what we found when we uh, surveyed teachers, we surveyed about a thousand teachers in the U.S. who teach elementary, middle, and high school. And we asked them, have you done any creative activity in your class in the past year? Anything, a project or an activity where your students get to practice creative thinking. Um, And of those uh, who did it, what we found was 95% of them said that fostering creativity led to better mental health and less stress for themselves and for their students. Mm -hmm. And that was a really cool thing about the study is the kind of the fringe benefits of not just, well, I gave this activity for my students and it really helped their mental well-being, and I saw their stress and anxiety go down. But me as a teacher, I also felt that same experience. Right. So that was really exciting for us because when we then uh, dug in and we saw, for instance, 82% of teachers that we surveyed saw those positive impacts on well-being and engagement And then they also, when we said, so how did that affect your burnout or your own job satisfaction? We got incredible statistics from the study, but we also got these really powerful quotes, you know, of teachers saying things like, when I know I'm doing something creative with my students, that's one of the mornings I can kind of get out of bed and I'm excited to go to the classroom myself. Mm -hmm. 
or those were the moments where I actually felt like I connected with my students. Like I saw them as a person and not just someone who's completely disengaged and re- like I'm just trying to get interested in the content. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I was a band director in another life, so that was I, I, that was me every morning. Like, yeah, you know, and so t- t- the classroom teacher doesn't always get that. It's hard to get that creativity in the classroom. Absolutely, and, and, and that's really interesting that you know it. It, it took us this long, and you guys found out that no, they feel better. I feel better, yeah. and and the cool part is is that the platforms we're talking about the, they extend beyond the classroom yeah. for both the teacher and the student. Absolutely, I, I think that's really interesting. So, in finding that, so did did you guys ask the next question? Okay, so how do we make this happen? Absolutely, yeah. So we've done a few things. One is when we looked at the examples of things that people did, they were not mind-blowing classroom pedagogy, right? And I think that's usually the the stopping point for a lot of, especially general education teachers, right? Like, I'm a math teacher. I'm a history teacher. I'm not going to bring in markers and crayons. And that's where we pause and say, that's not what we mean by creativity. It's not doing artistic stuff. It's where are moments where students can express themselves? Mm -hmm. Or even just an assignment. Where's an assignment where it's guaranteed 20 students are going to create 20 completely different things? Right. And suddenly, well, that can't be a worksheet because by definition they all have to be the same it's not going to be standardized tests it's really just these small pedagogical moves of are you allowing students to do something where they say i get to create or build or design something that is uniquely mine Mm -hmm. that's what a lot of our uh, free professional development has been focused on really research-based practices and just teaching teachers to look at any of their standards any of their curricula and take that moment and say where highlight the points where you think there's the biggest opportunity for students to design a unique solution or come up with a unique idea and express it. And suddenly, if you have 100 teachers uh, across grade levels in any subject who you ask that question, pretty soon they say, oh, yeah, I see that. I could do it. say, great, 15 minutes. Yeah. That's all you need. It's not a three-week project, just 15 minutes. Do a little creative yeah. Kickstarter and see what happens. Right. Well, okay. and that's one of the things that, as you're talking about this, I would imagine... Being an educator who was taking part in this survey Mm. and and, and, and taking part in this study, I would imagine there were many who probably, when the question was first posed or they first saw this, they were like, I don't do anything. We don't... I'm not, I'm not doing anything creative. It's not, you know, and, and even even with the expanded know definition, teachers, but. you know, they, they stop and think. You know, I, I don't think I really do anything that that would be considered creative. And then you kind of delve a little deeper, like yeah. you mentioned, and like you said, you know, it's it's just when the students can express themselves openly. When when like you said, you're going to get 20 different responses, and they kind of go, oh well, yeah, I guess I do this. Or yeah. even to me, even more importantly, is the thought that. If I am an educator and, and I realize that maybe I'm not doing some of those things, all of a sudden a door has been opened to say, oh, maybe I need to start thinking about doing some of those things. Absolutely. I mean, if you make explicit, you know, a lot of teachers at the end of a class, you know, like, that went really well. Like that class was great. There was energy. There was something about it. But teachers are so busy. Do you have the time to reflect on mm-hmm. what actually worked? What right. were the instructional strategies? And when you point to it and you're like, well, when I see this, I, I actually see this 10-minute creative activity that you did. I think that was it. I think that was what sort of made – it wasn't the love of polynomials. You know, It wasn't the incredible <laughs> slides that you made. I'm sure those are contributing factors. But you know, when teachers become self-aware of, oh, wow, this is actually an instructional move, not for fun, mm-hmm. but for student engagement and all these other benefits. Well, now I'm going to look at my lesson plans a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what I take from that is I, I love the fact you say 20, and I'm going back, 20 different individual creative things. Yeah. And what's interesting in a group of 20 people, uh, from my confidence, there's going to be at least one other person, human being in that room that's going to say, hey, I really like that, Jeff. That's really great. Yeah. You know, it's going to happen. And, and, that's going to spread really quickly because, you know, it's, it's really interesting. It's like saying good morning. Mm. It's the same thing. And it's going to build that confidence amongst the students. And, you know, that, that mental health well-being is going to be like, oh, this is, this is me. It, that, that hangs a lot. Fifteen minutes can hang a lot of a week. It can take the next seven days and give s- certain people yeah. the, the push they need in that classroom to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inject myself a little bit more here. Absolutely. There's you know, this incredible fringe benefit to creativity, which is by default, you have to share a piece of yourself, yeah. right? Because it's unique. Mm-hmm. And then when you do that, 
your teacher sees you as a unique individual and your classmates see you as someone different and special and something to offer. I actually have a quote from one of the teachers from the study that really stood out to me. They said, creative learning allows for stronger relationships to be built between the student and teacher, creating both a more positive environment for both, but it also gives me a break from direct instruction while students are working, giving me time to appreciate their unique talents and creativity that I might not otherwise see. Wow. And that's the magic. Yeah. 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 yeah, that is the magic. So let's talk about this. So professional development wise. Yeah. How do you guys oh, handle so that? Is that you know, that's one of those things that you don't I don't know, you know, our normal way of professional development is let's get as many teachers into this room as we can and we're gonna go through this over six hours in a day. That, oh yeah. That just doesn't work in this in this situation, does Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Adobe for Education is on a mission to transform the lives of students. And we've done a number of things to make that happen. Yeah. One is Adobe Express for Education. The premium version is free for K-12 yeah. globally. So the tools are there. But of course, we know tools sit on the shelf or aren't used thoughtfully unless there's professional development. So we've also given free professional development away. And we have a few different uh, approaches. We have self-paced courses um, that, you know, Pre-pandemic, our self-paced courses were maybe two or three hours. And the feedback we got from teachers was, oh, great, it feels robust. I get a badge at the end. As we all know, after pandemic, I was like, can we have more snacks? Yeah. Yeah. Can I, you know, I don't have a ton of time. Could, could you actually teach me something meaningful that I could yeah. bring into my classroom mm -hmm. in 30 minutes or less? Yeah. Right. And so almost all of our self-paced courses now are called Lightning Learning. 30 minutes, learn an instructional strategy, learn how to do it. You walk away ready to go. And that's transformed into our live professional yeah. development as well. Um, so when we show up into a school, it's you're certainly not sitting and watching someone present. You are actively participating. If it's a half day or full day, we call them creativity institutes. And you are up. You are using post-its. You're on screens. You're off of screens. We want the feeling of our professional development to be the feeling your students will have in class mm -hmm. when you do creative stuff with them. Yep. Yeah, because how many times have we been in... PD where uh, there's a person at the front of the room telling you what things should look like oh while gosh. you're sitting there in the chair do, pretty much doing the exact opposite of what they say things could look oh. like because you're not they're, they're not dem they're not modeling and Absolutely. I love the fact that you know what you guys do when you come in for these extended periods is you're modeling you're showing them listen you're not going to sit here and we're going you know, we're not going to preach at you from on high on what should be done exactly. you're going to be doing it get That's up you. out of your chair exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah it's that active learning i mean it's yes. exactly what you yes. want in a creative classroom that's exactly what you're looking at yeah. achieving yeah, and you know, I, I was, I'm a former middle and high school teacher, and I remember people coming in to deliver PD, and especially in the tech world, you spot someone training you on how to use this tool who was never a classroom teacher in the first five minutes, probably the first 10 yeah. seconds. And then, right? they then say you something. pull your phone up and you go, okay, well, yeah. uh huh. And so that's why, you know, also our commitment anyone that's training Adobe for Education PD, we were all classroom teachers. Mm -hmm. And that's our starting point. We yeah. say, like, we are here to talk about this specific thing that you want to do. Here's how I struggled when I was in the classroom. I want to show you something cool I learned to do with Adobe Tools that's resonating. Let me show it to you. Let's try it out, and then let's have a discussion on if this might work for you. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. real, real quick, classroom management mm. and, you know, the health of the teacher. Because that's why we're seeing so many young teachers and older teachers leaving the profession now. Yeah. Because classroom management, and you know, the key there is, we we used to say, and this is back in the '90s and early 2000s, hey, you got about 15 or 20 minutes of, yeah. of real. You've got their attention if you're lucky. Now, I truly believe in the last five to 10 years, you have about five minutes. Yeah. Especially since the pandemic, you got five minutes, and so you've got to figure out how to keep the rest of that 45 or 50 minute class or yeah. section engaged. Uh, you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in the survey, we, say, we said, uh, how often uh, throughout the year have there been moments when you experienced total exhaustion? 66% of teachers said, of course. Mm -hmm. um, when we said, what are the top three things causing it? In order, they were classroom management, um, low student engagement, mm -hmm. and then student mental health, mm -hmm. also affecting their, their own levels of burnout. Classroom management is real. I think what creative projects or activities allow is it's really hard to keeping a student's attention when they are passive receivers. They're your passive audience. Of course, it's hard to get them to just kind of listen and watch for five minutes. But when they're active creators, I challenge a teacher to say, hey, I let them do this creative structured activity where I got them set up. 
and for 15 minutes they were just completely disengaged mm -hmm. right. you know it's switching it like art well they're disengaged because what role are they playing in their learning right now mm. I think if you switch that up and then give them the opportunity to say at the end of this you're going to create something that you're going to show us all and it's going to be uniquely yours they are going to be engaged even if they're an early creative and they're scared they're like yes. oh my gosh i have to share something <laughs> yes. well they're engaged they're like i'm gonna to have to put myself out there i'm really paying attention now yeah so you know it's, what's exciting about this conversation is to me seeing a session at ISTE or any of the large conferences where it, we really need bean banks and we really need about eight hours yeah to sit down and talk about this yeah with you know it, it's one of those break up in groups of you know no more than four people you know because it's it's very personable, yeah. and, and I think that might be interesting. When I look back at education of growing up in the '70s and '80s, um, mm. it, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't personable, but it wasn't personable. <laughs> right. Our teachers were teachers. This is what you do. This is how we do it. Yeah. And as we've moved forward in our society, you know, it has become very personable. I mean, yeah. And that's the hard part with classroom management. That's the hard part with student mental health. I, you know, a teacher is that mental health worker. For 20, 20, 30 kids yeah. at a time. That that's that's really interesting. Um, yeah. I really love the work you guys are doing. This is this is you know good stuff that needs to be happening. So oh, thanks so much. All that to say, if our listeners want to find out more and get in touch with you or pick your brain or find out what they can uh, what they can do in their classroom, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, if you want to learn more about uh, Express, you can go to Adobe for Education dot com. Yeah. That's Adobe uh, Express for Education. Um, or if you want to explore professional development, classroom resources lesson plans, curricula, all free for teachers, you can go to edx, edex.adobe.com. Cool. And all your um, all your uh, blogs are great, by the way. So, uh, oh, thanks. Thanks for sharing this. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> so it. If you're out there, look for them. They're out there on the web. They're on <laughs> the Adobe blog. That's where we publish a lot of our research. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Hey, thanks for sitting in with us. Thanks. You've been listening to an Edutech Guys recording from ISTE 2024. Find this and many more at edutechguys.com. Adobe for Education is the creative resource for K-12 and higher education. When students have access to creative tools like Adobe Express, they can easily demonstrate learning and develop digital skills that go beyond the classroom, across the disciplines, and with all types of media, including posters, videos, web pages, presentations, drawings, and more. Find out more at adobeforeducation.com.